Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Chrysler 62TE transaxle. It's the most common front wheel drive transmission that Chrysler has. And you're also going to find it in one Volkswagen. Nonetheless, what we're going to be talking about is how to test the solenoid pack. There's some basic things you can check before you go into condemning it. So that way you know if it's a solenoid pack, if it's something electrical, or the powertrain control module. So make sure to check it out. Now the 62 TE started showing up in the late 2000s. The first vehicle to get it was the minivans. Eventually it made its way into the other front wheel drive vehicles as well. Now there's other different transmission options out there, but again, this is the most common one that you're gonna see. Now electronically, we do have a few sensors external, and mainly those are vehicle speed sensors. And from history and from me working on them, I've never seen those ever fail. The problem we typically see if it's anything electrical has something to do with the transmission solenoid pack. Now it could be external wire and it could be the powertrain control module. But again, the more common item for failing is that solenoid pack. And what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you how you can actually measure the resistance of specific pins on this connector right here. Now this connector goes directly to the solenoid pack. It's part of it. We've got a metal pan that actually encases it and it's actually bolted to the valve body. And I've done videos in the past on how to remove and replace that solenoid pack. But today we're actually going to step back a little bit and I want to show you some basic things you can test. Now at the dealership, the main way you actually would test this is with what we call a transmission simulator. It's a plastic box, it's got different adapter harnesses, knobs, and switches. And typically what we do is two things. We use the scanner to command things on that transmission simulator and we want to see different lights blink and vice versa what we would do we also would command things on the transmission simulator and see if it shows up in the data on the engine controller. Now what we're doing basically with that trans simulator is we're eliminating the physical transmission. We're unhooking all the electrical connectors and plugging it into that box. So just like the word says, transmission simulator, that's exactly what we're doing. Now the problem you run into is, I don't have one, and more than likely you're not going to have one. Now depending on how new that Chrysler dealership is, they might not have one. The other thing is, the one they have might be broke. The problem we run into is, they no longer make this tool. So there's some things you will be able to check. Now mind you, this isn't 100% foolproof, but from what I've seen time and time again, this has helped me as far as figuring out whether or not a specific solenoid is bad in that pack. Now to help us with diagnosing that solenoid pack, I went ahead and created this document right here. Now if you look at the bottom, we've got the basic layout of what the pins are on the solenoid pack. We've got the top designated, we've got it at the same angle as the transmission, and we numbered them 1 through 23. At the top, we've got the designated terminals that we're going to be using our multimeter with. We obviously got a common one, which is 10, which is dead center. And then we're going to jump over to the other terminals. And as we do that, as you can see here, we got them broke down to what they are. And this is the specs that we should be looking for. All the way to the right, I left you a blank area so you could actually write in what your readings are. Now the specs over here may vary a little bit different than what I've got written here. Remember, they are based off of temperature too. So you may see 1.3 ohms, you may see 1.8. What I recommend doing is you write down all your readings you've got and you take the average. If one of them is 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, from then on you know 1.5 is pretty much normal. Anything out of that range we know is suspect and more than likely bad. Now this is what a solenoid pack looks like outside of the transmission. This is that electrical connector that I pointed out before. It's the same thing that's in that diagram. And this is basically how it's laid out when you take that metal pan off. This is what you see. In the previous video, I showed you how to remove this. Unfortunately, to remove it, you take the valve body off because the bolts go through the bottom. Now, when you go to buy one, it's going to come as you see it. All the solenoids are internal. You cannot buy those separate. You could replace them if you had some, but for some reason, no one wants to offer them that way. If that was the case, all you'd have to do is take these torque screws off. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take it apart right now just so you can see how it's laid out. Once you remove those fasteners, the plate just comes straight up. And then you've got the plastic portion. It's kind of the circuit board of the solenoid pack. All the solenoids actually come in through the bottom of it. And your pressure sensors are actually mounted to the bottom of it as well. And that's just a matter of prying up. 
It's got these alignment dowels that kind of keep it nice and snug. Now on the back side, you can actually see the pressure sensors. And then over here, you can actually see the solenoids. Physically, they are removable. You can pull them up and take them out. On different transmissions, mainly in the trucks, they actually have all the O-rings you can replace in here for some unknown reason. Can't replace solenoids, but they want to sell the O-rings. But remember, you're never really going this far. You're replacing the assembly. But I think it's kind of cool to see what we're checking. In a perfect world, we'd be able to buy just a solenoid, replace that solenoid, O-rings, put everything back together. But unfortunately, as I said, you're getting it as one part. Now to test the solenoid pack, we're gonna need two things. The first one will be in that document that I just showed you. If you scroll down in the description below, you'll see a Google Drive link. Click on that, print you out a few copies. The other thing is a multimeter. We're gonna be checking resistance. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. A cheap one will work just as well as an expensive one. And you're gonna be using more than likely the leads that come with it, or I wanna show you an option right here. And if you're a full-time mechanic, you're gonna like this. I went almost 20 years without having one, and all I would do was stab wires, cut wires, shove paper clips into terminals and spread them and damage them. And I caused so many problems that this right here has saved me so many times since. This is a must have for a technician. The average person won't have access to this and they're not gonna probably spend the money, and I fully understand. But if you're a seasoned mechanic, spend the money on something. It doesn't have to be this brand. But here's what we got. We've got a kit that has different size terminals. We've got different leads that we can hook up to the multimeter. So that way we find something that fits that solenoid pack and we just slide it on, check the numbers, and move on to the next terminal. It stays in place, it doesn't fall. We don't have to sit there and hold these terminals like most people right here on this pick right here on the end of this lead. Instead, I can find the appropriate one, pull it off, hook it up to my lead, and slide it onto the terminal for the solenoid pack. Again, as a technician, this is kind of a must have. I went, like I said, 20 years of just poking wires, cutting wires, stabbing things I didn't need to, damaging connectors. You need something like this. Average price is anywhere from $100 to $200, but it pays for itself. This is really what separates the difference between a, a grease monkey and a technician, is how you actually diagnose and how you treat the vehicles you're working on. So I've got two solenoid packs laid out here that we're gonna be testing. Both of them have different issues. They're both bad. The one on that transmission on the stand is a good solenoid pack, so we're not gonna see any problems. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go down the chart. Now the common terminal on all of these is terminal 10. That comes from the trans control relay. That's basically what controls or powers up everything that has to do with lint mode as well. So when we de-energize that, that drives us into lint mode on these electronic transmissions. Nonetheless, 10 is the common terminal. So one lead of our multimeter is always gonna be on terminal 10. The other one's gonna to go to the corresponding item that we're testing. And with one lead of the multimeter on terminal 10, we're gonna go ahead and place the other on two, and we're gonna be checking the low reverse solenoid. We expect to see anywhere from 1.6 to 1.8 ohms. So that shows to be a good solenoid. Again, remember, it's temperature related. That's what we're gonna use as far as a benchmark to check the rest of them with. What we do is we'll just move on down the line. And with one lead still on the number 10 terminal, we're gonna move over to the number seven. That's the underdrive solenoid, and we should get the same reading as we did for the low reverse. And as you go, write down what your reading was, and we'll see if anything stands out. So now that we've tested the first two items, all I'm gonna do at this point is just continue down the chart, testing the solenoids and the pressure sensors. Now the trans solenoids and the pressure sensors will have different readings. There's also a line pressure solenoid that's gonna be different than all of them. So as you go through, you're gonna see some that might be 1.6. You'll see others that are around 300, again, Check your chart to see if that's normal. Now, after recording all the readings I have, I started comparing things, and one thing stood out, and that is terminal 20 and 10. That's the DC solenoid. 1.6, 1.8 ohms is what we're expecting, or at least an average of what the other ones are. In this case, we got 7.2. Now, if that solenoid not reading the same as the others, we obviously know it's bad. This time it's 7.3, a minute ago it was 7.2, sometimes I see 7.5. We know that the DC solenoid inside that pack has failed. Now another thing we know obviously they came in with a check engine light, they had a concern, and I guarantee you that what you'll find is that the DC solenoid is what the code is. So you've just verified this solenoid pack is bad. You didn't need a trans simulator to do that. 
So I went ahead and swapped out the two solenoid packs. So that way I can show you what's wrong with this one. This one's a little bit different. Now on a known good solenoid, we're showing 1.5 ohms. The one that's bad on this one after going through it is what we call the LC solenoid. That's terminal 17. Terminal 17 is over here. When we hook up to it, we get no change. It's showing an open. So we want to make sure our leads are still hooked up. Everything's fine. We'll jump over to something else. Terminal 19 over here, we get our 1.6 ohms. So we've got an internal open. Now, like with a lot of other things, this method isn't 100% foolproof. Just because a solenoid actually ohms out fine doesn't mean that it's operating properly. But it's another tool in your arsenal that you can use. It doesn't cost anything to download this form, do some little resistance checking to see if you do or do not have a bad solenoid. So it could help you out. Again, it's just one other method that you can use for diagnosing these. So hopefully this video helps you out the next time you have a 62TE come in that's got a transmission electrical problem. Don't forget, in the description below is that Google Drive document. Click on it, print out a few copies, store it somewhere, so that when you do have a vehicle come in, you've already got the documents on what you need to check. Now, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you got any comments or suggestions about anything you saw in today's video, leave something in the comments below. Also, you can email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. Last but not least, if you like to shop on Amazon, which everybody does, scroll down in that description. There is a link. Click on that link and make that your Amazon homepage. And anytime you buy something, you will be helping to support this channel. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching.